comic industry was growing and was obviously a success at this point as a few new publishers joined in the competition. For the first time ever, we had more than 10 different monthly titles on the newsstands and the month of cover dated February 1937, we had a big jump up to 14 titles competing for your dime. Star Comics number one with a cover date of February 1937 was the first comic published by Chesler Comics. He was an oversized eight and three eighths by 11 and three eighths size edited by Harry A. Chesler. The issue tied with Star Ranger number one as the first Chesler published comic book. This issue is notable for having original material back when this was still the exception rather than the rule. Dan Hastings is the most familiar character represented in this issue, and H.C. Kiefer is the best-known artist. The cover is by W.C. Brigham. Jingle Jingle is a one-page story from writer and artist Fred Schwab. And Fred Schwab, born August 25th, 1917, lived until May 13th, 2000. An American cartoonist whose humor panels and short features were published in a wide variety of comics from 1938 to 1950. His notable comic book appearances include Timely Comics and Marvel Comics No. 1 in 1939, the first publication of the company that would become Marvel Comics. He also worked on some of the earliest publications for DC Comics. Schwab's first known comic book credit is as writer and artist of the two-page Tenderfoot Joe, a Western humor story featured in Star Ranger No. 1. Other early work includes the one-page Silly Sleuth in Detective Comics 1, 2, 5, and 7 that came out later in 1937. The Great Boudini was featured in Funny Pages at Centaur Comics, Butch the Pup in More Fun Comics, and a Sherlock Holmes parody featured for Fox Comics in Mystery Man Comics number 1 and number 2 in 1939. He also did issues of DC's Adventure Comics, Action Comics, and others. For Funny Zinc in 1939, either Schwab or Martin Filchuk drew the cover of Motion Picture Funnies Weekly. Sources differ on this. An unpublished series designated to be a promotional giveaway in movie theaters. That comic is best known for the first appearance of the superhero The Submariner, created by fellow Funnies Inc. freelancer Bill Everett. When Funny Sync then supplied the contents of Marvel Comics No. 1, the first comic book published by Marvel Comics' predecessor, Timely Comics, the packager included both an expanded version of the Submariner story plus five one-panel gags by Schwab that appear on the inside front cover. Schwab also supplied humor pieces and features in the 1940s for Columbia Comics' Big Shot Comics, Fiction House's Fight Comics, Captain Flight Comics from Four Star Publications, Fantastic Comics from Fox, Target Comics from Novelty Press, and Daring Mystery Comics from Timely Comics. Craig Flessel gave us Sources of Famous Quotations, a two-page story. Raphael Asterita gave us a two-page roundtable adventure story featuring King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. Bob Fanton was a two-page story from writer Kenny the Magician, as it's credited, and pencils by Raphael Astarita in The Detective Mystery. Raphael Norman Astarita was born August 2nd, 1912 in Brooklyn, New York. In 1935, Raphael was 23 when he began to work for comics. He drew a two-page strip about King Arthur for new comics. He signed the work Raphael Astarita instead of using his birth name Raphael. His friends called him Raph. He drew for the Chessler shop from 1936 to 39, and then Eisner and Iger from 1939 to 41. He joined the staff at Fiction House Comics in 1942 and worked there for two years. In 1947, he became the art director at Ned Pine's Standard Comic Books, and from 1950 to 51, he worked for Avon Comics. Star Ranger number one from Chester Publications with a cover date of February 1937 is considered to be the very first all-Western comic. Tide is the first comic published by Chesler Comics. There is a Jesse James story included. Craig Flessel art is one of the highlights and it's a large format. Again, the 8 by 3 8 and 11 and 3 8 size from Chesler Publications with Harry A. Chesler editing. The cover is by W.M. Allison. Silver Saddle is a two-page story written by Frank Gruber with pencils by Craig Fleissel. He also drew Lariat Law, a two-page story from writer W.C. Miller, a Western frontier story. 
The Return of Tarzan was a one-page story from writer Dick Ryan. This unusual story was about an African native learning that he's been cast in the next Tarzan movie, but there is no Tarzan in the actual story. Western Picture Stories number one with a cover date of February 1937 came out from Comics Magazine Company. 68 page 10 cent issue. Not only is this issue considered the first Western comic tied for the honor with Chesler's Star Ranger number one, it's one of the first comic books to focus on a single theme at a time when most series were a mix of very different genres like Famous Funnies. The cover is the only time we've seen Will Eisner called Bill Eisner but it's quite early in that great artist's career, appearing just half a year after his debut in WoW No. 1, and the cover is credited to William Allison. Will Eisner gave us a seven-page long strip called Wild Tex Martin, and Ray Burley was the artist for Famous Frontiersman, a two-page story about Buffalo Bill Cody, the first of a series. Detective Picture Stories number 3 came out with a cover date of February 1937 from Comics Magazine. There is even a mile-high pedigree copy of this early comic, one of the earliest comics from the Edgar Church Massive Comic Book Collection. Detective Picture Stories is listed by Overstreet as the first single-themed comic book. The third issue of the series is dated one month before DC's Detective Comics number 1 would come out. All issues of this title are considered very scarce. The cover was by J.M. Wilcox. There was a seven-page Roy Graham story from writer Ed Moore Jr., who was born in Maryland on June 7, 1918. In the early 30s, Ed Moore assisted Norman Marsh on Dan Dunn in 1937 and 38, and then Moore also assisted on Don Wilson in 1938. Bayfront Cowboy was a lengthy seven-page comic strip from writer-artist Ellis Edwards. He was a pre-Golden Age writer and artist who worked in the mid-late 30s for Centaur and DC. Famous Funnies number 31, cover dated February 1937, featured a Napoleon cover image that's published by Eastern Color, still the longest-running modern comic book and the first comic book to pass issue number 30. It featured the return of War on Crime in a four-page story from writer Rex Collier. This was the first crime genre story ever published in each issue. Buck Rogers returned in a four-page story from writer Philip Francis Nolan with pencils by Rick Yeager under the alias Dick Calkins. Joe Palooka returned in a one-page story from Ham Fisher. Hammond Fisher, born September 24, 1900, lived until December 27, 1955, an American comic strip writer and cartoonist who signed his work Ham Fisher. Best known for his popular long run on Joe Palooka, which was launched in 1930 and ranked as one of the top five newspaper comic strips for several years. Fisher hired Al Cap, who later achieved fame as the writer-cartoonist of Little Abner. While ghosting on Joe Palooka, Cap claimed to have created the storyline about a stupid muscle-bound hillbilly named Big Leviticus, who is an obvious prototype for the Little Abner character. When Cap quit Joe Palooka in 1934 to launch his own strip, Fisher badmouthed him to colleagues and editors, claiming that Cap had stolen his idea. For years, Fisher would bring the characters back to his strip, billing them as the original hillbilly characters, and advising readers not to be fooled by imitations. It has been long taken for granted that the hillbilly characters in Joe Palooka were the creations of Cap while he was ghosting Fisher's strip, and that Fisher's later denial of Cap's involvement in the strip was the result of professional jealousy. However, while there is no doubt that Cap did a substantial amount of work on Joe Palooka for several months as an artist, and probably also to some degree a writer, comic historians Dennis Kitchen and Michael Schumacher have recently made a case that there is no way of knowing whether Cap or Fisher invented the hillbillies. So there is some confusion on whether it is Ham Fisher or Al Cap who has been writing or drawing many of the Joe Palooka comic strips over the past year in various comic titles. This issue also featured a one-page story, Bobby, from Jerry Iger.